Of course you have to be here. Don't you have to come on the 27th? Would Ben and I have to serve our session? Oh yeah. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Dr. Gerald Case Blanchard. I am the director of vocal music as well as being the area music coordinator for the college here in the music program. We welcome you to our auditorium. This is our recital space. We do have a larger uh, theater, but this is where we have our more intimate recital. So it's so wonderful to see all of your bodies in this space uh, to bring that energy up to the stage. A couple of quick housekeeping things. What is the name of this thing here? <laughs> it's a cell phone. And it makes noise, right? It also projects light. Well, think about the amount of work Abby has put into her performance. So if this goes off, it can distract her. Or if you're on your cell phone texting, it gets very bright because the house will be down in darkness. And that is also uh, visually distracting. So I ask you to take a few seconds now to pull these out and make sure that they are shut off. Thank you. Also, if you need to use the facilities, uh, most of you would have walked past them there down the main hall when you come through the main entrance of the building to your right if you're going back towards the uh, back doors. Um, we do ask that you please limit your movement to times when she's not actively performing. So if you have to excuse yourself, uh, please do so during applause or during an intermission or some kind of uh, break. Because uh, once again, when she's performing, she's focused, and then if the door clangs, it will distract her. So we want to make sure that we don't take anything away from her performance because she's worked so hard. That's enough of me talking. Well, I take that back. There's one more thing. Everyone, look in your programs. If you got one of the fancier programs, you should have an insert about an event that is coming up on April 28th. That is the Singing in the Spring, which is the big choral event uh, here is going to be at First Presbyterian Church downtown. Uh, you are all welcome to attend that event. We would love to see you come back for more KCC sponsored events. But something you do not have in your program that I want to remind everyone about next week, Wednesday. At 1 o'clock, we will have Dr. Maureen Carlson, uh, who will be a, a guest a vocal coach and clinician for a master class at 1 o'clock right here in this space. It is free and open to the public. And then that evening at 7.30 in the same space on the 17th, she will be giving a vocal recital. She's uh, an internationally recognized soprano, has performed with a multitude of organizations. She is a Michigan native, so we're really happy to have her come and work with our students. So you are all invited to attend that. Now, I'm done talking. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy this evening's performance. Thank you. 
here we were blind roommates, and while I change for the next piece, she's going to say some words. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. It means a lot to me. Um, I didn't really know what to expect when Abby had originally asked me to do this. Um, but back when we were freshmen, uh, we'd always talked about her playing the piano, and I was there and painting all the music that was blowing and out of my ears. And then when this opportunity came along, I couldn't help but say yes, because this was everything we'd ever talked about. And seeing this happen is amazing, and she's just incredible. Abby is one of those people who can do a lot, pull it all off. So for this painting, I began with an idea that formed from an article I found by Gilead Barelli. Brahms, The Decay of Passion and the Sense of Death, on album 118. So I've read this article with the intention of pulling out specific pieces that I could reiterate in a visual way, because I wanted to be able to listen to the song, but also be accurate with history. So a couple of quotes I found were, the black wings are constantly flapping above us. The black wings are a type of testimony, of which, according to Freud, in a certain degree, in which one loses interest in the outside world. And this piece was really interesting to me because it was all about the decay of passion while also talking about his love. And so that's the reason I added the three um, Roman numerals for the words I love you because it was all about how he loved, he had this love, but it was just not, I guess there was something missing from everything. Sounds about right. Um, <laughs> so, and then another quote I found was, the sense of death as an ultimate decay or the passion in which we are the essence of life. And I worked very hard on this. This was the first piece I've ever made for anyone else, and there was a lot of passion put into it. I can attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> Many hours, but well worth it, obviously. And then the quotes that were inspired by these ideas um, were possibly because of the psychological state that Brown was in while he created his inner mesos. I took his quotes and applied them using my own passion. I incorporated many mediums throughout my work, starting with a layer of old book pages, watercolor, and playing with layers of collage in this format. I used oil paints to create depth and screen printing as to add detail. Throughout this piece, I was able to explore my creative abilities on a large scale for a collaborative project with a new friend. Um, on, another hand, on another note, I did create many mono prints with the Brahms head on it, that's what I call it anyway. Um, so these are all screen prints or with mono print over the top of it. And I would love if you all could come down after the show, of course, and look at all of them and you're all welcome to take one home. Uh, it's made, part of making uh, this event a 360 event because you can take it home with you and remember how incredible this was. Um, so lastly, I wanted to read a brief mes message from Joseph Lynn who is the designer for the costume that Abby will be wearing. This outfit is part of my spring-summer 2020 collection. For this collection, I was inspired by artwork by Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. The design itself is simple and includes a lot of pleats. The shirt has two opening pleats in the front that look like an, that look like an armor. The pants also include pleats that pull the fabric open as Abby walks around. The outfit also includes many variations in how it can be worn. For example, the back of the shirt and the sleeves can be unbuttoned and turned inside out to create a different look. The design is very special to me because it is one of my first custom works, and I made it personal through all the details. On the left of the shirt, I embroidered part of the music score from Bartók's piece of Allegro Barboa, Barbaro. On the right side, I have a Hungarian flag that represents Bartók's nationality. And next to that detail is the outline of Michigan, which represents where Abby is from. Then there's a cross that represents where Abby and I met in Catholic school. And the flowers are Abby's favorite flowers. Each special detail brings the artists together, Bartók, Abby, and me. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy my outfit design for Abby's performance of Allegro Barbaro. So thank you all for coming again.
and my recital and really being so supportive, I started taking music lessons at KCC when I was in high school. So they always just were a door that was open and they have such a thriving program here and I'm just so excited to be here, so thank you so much. Um, I also want to say a thank you to, uh, she's not here tonight, but my teacher, Dr. Alexandra Moscow de Feed, um, just really opened my mind to music and piano and I, I wouldn't be doing this if she wasn't my professor. It really inspires me to find different ways to make music mean something in my life. It's not just something you practice for. Um, just looking around, I mean, all the family and friends that I see from dance and everything, it's just, it really touches my heart. Fourth grade teachers, I mean, I really feel so loved right now. And a big uh, special thank you to my family who's here, my grandma, my great aunts, my mom and my dad, all the music lessons you paid for. <laughs> <laughs> Even my brother is here. I, am so <laughs> I really feel loved. I really feel loved. Um, I have one more treat for you tonight. And that is my voice. So when I was at KCC, I actually took voice lessons. I didn't think I'd be a pianist. <laughs> um, and so tonight, I want to invite Betty Picard on stage. And tonight, I will be her pianist, not her voice student. <laughs> and she's going to sing um, an aria. And she'll tell you about it while I go get the music. <laughs> Father, please have 